So here is a tutorial for the Ken Burns effect using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. Uh, using Photoshop we're going to take a picture, the same picture that was in the video to start this off, and uh, make a couple of layers so that we can add some movement to them. Uh, to save time I've already used, uh, I, I made a layer already of just the fisherman here, but I'm going to show you how to make a quick layer just using the quick selection tool. Uh, so up here if I click on the uh, little brush with the ants around it. I'm going to be able to make sure I work on the right layer and click on just the rocks here and I'm going to grab this tree too. So as you can see I missed a little bit of the area here and I went above the rocks. There's, I'm above the rocks there. So all I have to do is you can see my circle has a little bit of a plus on it. If I hold alt it's going to turn to a minus and then it's going to start erasing pieces of my selected area. So I missed a little bit there. I'll let go of Alt and keep working around these rocks. <coughs> I'll speed this up a little bit. So now that I'm done selecting that area, uh, I'm going to create a new layer of just what I have selected. And to do that, I want to make sure that I'm on my working layer. And I'm going to press Control and J. And it's going to show me a layer of just what I have selected. And now I'm able to go back in with my either quick or magic wand tool or selection tool or eraser and take little areas out that I don't want in there. If there's a little bit too much green I can go in there and remove some of it. I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that right now. So now that I've worked on my rocks a little bit more I'm going to take my uh, lasso tool I'm going to go around here and I'm going to just kind of take in where I want to keep my background because this little area here and I want to add and fill it in to make sure that my final picture will be full everywhere I want it to be. So once I have that little area highlighted I'm going to go up to the top and click on my fill layer and I'm going to ensure that it says content to wear, uh, my blending mode I'm going to keep normal for this and opacity at 100% and what it's going to do is it's going to guess and try to fill it in with the best fill that it thinks it will do. Uh, by pressing Control D, I will deselect it, and now that will be there. So now I'm going to try and do the same thing just with the tree, and I'm going to speed this up as well. So we just finished up with our tree. Um, I'm going to rename that layer for tree. I'm going to name my rocks layer rocks. So now if I open up all of my layers, I'll put my trees above my rocks because that's how we're going to want them to go. And I can go to my working layer and there's my background, which will eventually be my, my background right, right in here. So the next thing is, is now I want to take my rocks, my trees, and my fishermen offside of my, outside of my working layer. And to do that I'm going to do a couple of things. Uh, actually I'm just going to use one step and that's by holding control and clicking right on the thumbnail of the layer and you'll see that it will highlight with the marching ants everything that's on that layer. Now making sure that I'm on my working layer or the layer that's going to eventually be my background, I'm going to go to File, Fill, and Content to wear it again. And Photoshop does its best job to fill that in. Now a little trick is if I deselect that, you can see that it didn't quite get the whole picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him back in there. And now that he's selected, I'm going to go up to Select and Modify. And I'm going to expand it by not quite 20 pixels. I'm going to go 5 pixels. And you'll see that it did a little bit more of the picture. If I content to wear it again on my working layer, Edit, Fill, Okay. you'll see that it did a little bit better of a job of getting rid of those pieces there. I'm going to do the same thing now for with the tree layer, working layer. So there we go. We just took out all of those images on our picture and we filled in our background. You can see there are some areas here that maybe Photoshop didn't fill perfectly here and here. 
and it does a pretty good job. But what we can use is a clone stamp tool. And how the clone stamp tool works is the tool, if you hold Alt and go over a piece of your layer, you'll see that there's a crosshair on it. If I click there, I will be able to transport or transfer that area to a different area of the picture. So what I want to do is to kind of fill this up, I will just grab some pieces from around it and kind of fill it in so that it looks a little bit cleaner. I'll do the same thing down here even though it shouldn't really make a difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save each of these layers as its own image. I'm going to save this background image as a JPEG. So file, save as, I'm going to choose a JPEG. I'm going to choose an easy spot where I'll be able to find it. And I'm going to name it background. Now I'm going to do this for each of the other layers but I'm going to save them all as a PNG. Now as you see as I open up my folder, you'll see I have my JPEG as my background and my PNGs as my fishermen, my rocks, and my tree. So now that I have all of my layers on my photo done and saved either as PNGs or JPEGs, I'm going to take the files from my folder, ensuring that the type is right, and I'm going to drag them down into Adobe Premiere and put them in my import media. I'm now going to click my background and drag it over to my timeline. I'm going to make each of these pictures 10 seconds long. And to do that, I'm going to right click on my background layer. And I'm going to click on the speed and duration. And right now it's set at speed 100%. My duration is set at a very low rate. And I'm just going to put in 10 seconds. OK. And now my picture will play as a video for 10 whole seconds. Now I'm going to layer in my PNGs. I'm going to do it in order that I want from um, furthest back at the bottom to the closest ones up front. Now you can see I ran out of tracks so I'm going to right click right up here and you can right click anywhere in here. I'm going to add a track. I'm only going to add one track. It's going to add an audio track as well and I'm going to put my fisherman in. My fisherman however should be behind my rocks so I'm going to move those up by selecting both of them and I'm going to click on fishing and put them in there. Now if I highlight all of them, I can grab my little snap bar, snap tool, bring it to the end, and make them all the same length. If I play my video, you can see my, vi my picture looks like it belongs there. Each of my layers, my tree, my rocks, my fisherman, and my background, all are in the right spots. So to add the Ken Burns effect, I'm going to click on my fishing layer, and I'm going to go up to the effects controls. I'm going to drop down the motion area here. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a, a keyframe to have my scale at 100% and my position where the picture should be. And now I'm going to add a little bit of movement to my picture. So to do that, I'm just going to hover over top of the scale, the 100%. And by clicking and dragging right and left, you can see how I can increase the scale of the fisherman. The trick is with the Ken Burns effect, to make it look good do a very small increase and very small movement so that it's almost not noticeable to the viewer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with each of the layers and add a little bit of movement to them and then we'll catch up after that. As I play my video, there's all four different layers moving at a different rate. The trick is to really not overpower it with too much movement. Now we're going to save and export this image, or this moving image. And today we're going to save it as, you can save it as an animated GIF or AVI. We're going to save it as an H264, which is going to end up as an MP4 file. And we're going to name it as fly fishing in our tutorial picture. 